Hey everyone, it's Elaine. Today I wanted to talk about a little bit of neuroscience in relation to the brain of someone that grows up in a religious cult, um, someone that leaves a religious community that has a lot of high control. So what I wanted to discuss in relation to the brain of someone that grows up in a religious cult is how family members can manage their expectations and how they can you know, be able to meet their family members where they are with the knowledge that I'm about to present to you. So people that grow up in religious cults or high control religions oftentimes are fed messages about the impending doom of hell. And if you lose your membership, you won't be saved, you know, salvation kind of, that, that salvation doctrine, you know. Um, sometimes this can get ingrained into the mind of someone at a very early age from birth up until you know years and years and years decades and so there's a portion of the brain called the amygdala and this portion of their brain is responsible for fear-based emotions uh, fear-based responses so what happens in the brain of someone that grows up in a religious cult or religious community where high control is very, very pervasive. The messages of you're gonna go to hell, you're gonna burn in the lake of fire, which is the mes message I heard from, from birth, really, up until my early 20s. Um, the amygdala gets hijacked by these messages. So what's the result? Is sometimes it can result in hypervigilance, a state of fear. You're always in a state of fear. Um, you could be more jumpy, um, less trustworthy of others. Um, it can manifest in PTSD sometimes, post-traumatic stress disorder, um, especially for members who leave the religious community because subconsciously they're afraid that they're gonna go to hell, that they're, that they're not gonna be saved, quote unquote. Um, and so it kind of helps put into context why some family members that are still in the religious community react the way they do in this kind of like fear-based response because they just want to control what's happening because the amygdala is hijacked, right? That portion of the brain. So their immediate reaction for to you leaving may manifest as this almost like this very controlling response like, no, no, you cannot leave the church. Like, if you leave, then this, because they're so afraid, you know, for you, but they're also just internally, they're afraid. Their body is like, is very, very in a state of hyper arousal. That's the best way I can explain it. And so I noticed that when I left my religious community, my high control religion, I was very hyper vigilant, very jumpy. I noticed that. And then when I started healing, Starting going to therapy, started, you know, attending Reiki sessions. I just felt more relaxed in my body, more in touch with my emotions. And it really helped with that aspect and those symptoms. So similar, I want to compare the brain of someone that grows up in a religious cult to the brain of an addict. When the brain of an addict, their um, reward system gets hijacked because of the drug they're taking. So for example, if it's nicotine or alcohol or cocaine, whatever it is, right? Their pleasure reward system gets hijacked because so much dopamine is being released from the drug that that's gonna take precedence just like the member of the religious cult, their membership is gonna take precedence because their amygdala is hijacked, right? So when you express your emotions about leaving or you just kind of vocalize your thoughts, they're not really gonna hear you because the brain of someone that grows up in a religious cult, um, their membership's gonna take precedence over everything. Even their, their, their family relationships, even the relationship with their daughter, their son, you know, that's gonna take precedence. And that's what's really tragic about the situation is because the person, whether it's the daughter or the son or whoever the, the person is that's leaving the religious community or the cult, their needs, their emotional needs aren't gonna be tended to, you know, and that can cause relational wounds, it can cause rejection wounds, it can manifest an anxious attachment. So when that individual grows up and starts to form romantic relationships, they can be very anxious because their 
parent wasn't present for them during those times where they express themselves because the parent or whoever the religious person was, whoever the member was in the family wasn't attuned to them because what took precedence was their membership because of the amygdala hijacking. Similar to the brain of an addict, the dopamine, dopamine reward system is taken over. So they're not gonna be as present for their partner or their friends because that the the drug is going to take precedence. I hope this explanation made sense. Um, it kind of helps you put things into context when speaking to family members in a religious that are still in your the religious cult or the religious community so you can kind of lower your expectations. I know it doesn't take the pain away. It doesn't really soothe the pain but it can help, kind of help you manage your expectations about how they're going to respond and kind of come to terms with it. Like you're not going to have that that response that you want sometimes because of, to put it plainly, the, the amygdala hijacking and that physiological process that occurs because of the 